Hi, welcome to lesson one. In the first book, we learned all the fingerings from the low D to the third octave D. And now we will learn all the other fingerings that you need to know to play most of the repertoire. So we will start with the low C and the low C sharp. So if you have the D like that, low D, you add your pinky on the first little key that's next to the E flat key, that's C sharp. Then you roll it down and it's C natural. If you have a B foot joint, you can roll again and get to the B. Um, once you touch the low C, the low C sharp is already down. So you don't have to press super hard on the lower one. Some students in the beginning, they think that, but no, it's just really comfortable. Just look at it, check. So I will play those notes once. So low C sharp, low C. And the other note that we will learn is the high D sharp. That's easy. It's all the fingers. The pinky is on its normal spot and on the E flat and then all the fingers. So that's how it is. I'll do the sound exercise. So it's the same thing. Just we go one note extra. So you take your time in that exercise. It's a bit like a type of uh, meditation on sound. You listen to your sound. You try to keep a good embouchure, um, breathe well, support well. Then the second octave, two, um, three, four. the third octave. So that's a very good exercise to start um, because like you can place your sound, place your embouchure and then you're ready to start playing faster. Now we're going to do scales and arpeggios. So in this book, we will do two octave scales. In the first book, we're doing one octave, now two octaves. I wrote it in a way that's a bit easier. You stop on the tonic. The tonic is the first note of the scale. So in C major, the tonic is C. So it goes ta, 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 and then it stops on the, on the next tonic. I'll play it once. I wrote 69, so I'll play that 69. Of course, in the beginning, you might play it a bit slower. It's totally fine. Play it at the speed that you control. And that's good for any exercise in the book. And you can work your way up. So that's it for that. So 
each click is a quarter note. So thumb, 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 thumb. So that should be okay. In the next exercise, each click is an eight note. So you still have two notes per click, like that. Da, 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 like that. I'll play it. Three, four. Once you're done there you can do it again and again because that's the type of exercise you do it the more you do it the easier it gets so it's always the same notes going up and down so it works on creating muscle memory and so maybe in the beginning just learn one line and then another day the second line take your time go slowly if if it's too difficult sometimes to play with the metronome don't use the metronome yet and come back to it later when Try it in two weeks, maybe. If you feel like it's stressing you out, maybe stop the metronome and start working on it later. Now it's time to practice your study. Studies are very good to build technique, sight reading and musicality, so practice them. They're all in your supplementary material in MP3 files, so you can listen to them. And try to make sure to do the articulations, all the slurs and the staccatos. So staccatos, it's when you have a little dot and it's short like this. So you don't play, but so you hear the difference. So uh, go in there to listen to the study. For the repertoire, I've selected some pieces and I cut them into sections. So you learn one section in each lesson. So in this lesson, you have uh, the beginning of Antonio Vivaldi's Allegro. Uh, you have three flats, so make sure to check that. B, E and A are flat. So when you see those notes, you have to play them flat, except if there's an accidental. The accidental is good for the whole measure, but only for that measure. And you can also go in the supplementary material in the mp3 files to listen to this part uh, when you want to learn it. Mm -hmm. 